Good morning. Welcome back to JPC Spiritual Talk. Jared Campbell. Sacred Legacy, Saint Scripture, and Sanctified Living. So welcome back to Sacred Legacies, Saint Scripture, and Sanctified Living. A profound exploration to the lives of saints and the enduring wisdom of Scripture through the lens of Orthodox Christianity. This study is designed to deepen our understanding and connection to the divine, offering robust insights into the lives of notable saints and the profound theological messages in the epistle and gospel readings. By examining the steadfast faith and virtues of the saints and unpacking the rich layers of scripture, we, we, we aim to draw closer to God and apply these timeless teachings to our daily lives. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to ask the Lord. We're going to ask him to shine into hearts, the lovely master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open up the eyes of our mind, and that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us to apply what we learn, such as having conquered simple desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, your light, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. So we'll get our screen shared over. We'll get to section one of the study, starting out with the saints. Thank you all again for following. Our first saint, the holy higher martyr, Pancreas. We get our screen over, should see the saints. Pancreas, Bishop of Sicily. So the holy higher martyr. Pancreas was a luminary in the early church, known for his vigorous faith and unwavering commitment to spreading the gospel. As Bishop of Tarminium in Sicily, Pancreas faced intense persecution, yet remained firm in his mission. His martyrdom is a testament to his enduring dedication to Christ and his flock. Through his prayers and sacrifices, he illuminated the path for many to embrace the Christian faith demonstrating that authentic leadership in the church is marked by selflessness, courage, and a profound love for God and humanity. Beautiful. Dionysius, the order. So Dionysius, the order, was celebrated for his elegance and wisdom, and he used his gifts to articulate the truths of the Orthodox faith. His teachings and writings provided clarity and inspiration during doctrinal confusion and conflict. Dionysus exemplified the power of words when rooted in divine truth, showing that oratory is not merely about elegance, but about conveying God's wisdom and love. His life encouraged us to seek knowledge and understanding, to defend our faith thoughtfully, and to use our voices to lift up and educate others. Beautiful. Metrophenes of Mount Athos. So Metrophenes of Mount Athos is revered as a model for piety and spiritual discipline. His life on Mount Athos, a center of orthodoxy, was marked by profound aestheticism, prayer. Metrophenes' dedication to his life in Athos demonstrates the transmitted power of withdrawing from worldly distractions to seek a deeper communion with God. His legacy calls all Christians to cultivate a prayerful heart and to prioritize their spiritual growth, regardless of their vocation or station in life. Beautiful. The last one we're going to talk about today, Mathosius. Methodosius, the higher martyr, Bishop of Lampus. So, Mathosius exemplified pastoral care and theological rigor. He was distinguished by his efforts to nurture his flock and defend the Orthodox faith against heresy. Madosia's martyrdom underscores the ultimate sacrifice of a shepherd for his sheep, which mirrors the same sacrifice, Christ. His life is a powerful reminder of the cost of discipleship and the enduring strength of steadfast faith. Madosia's witness calls us to stand firm in our belief and to support one another in our spiritual journeys. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. So our first reading 
We'll come out of Romans chapter 7, starting at verse 14. We're going to read to Romans chapter 8, verse 4. So we're going to read a slightly a little more. <clears throat> so here we go. So Romans chapter 7, starting at verse 14. A little bit of a tongue twister this morning, but we'll get it done. It says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I, I will not to do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that is evil. I find then a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wrecked man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, so then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On the accounts of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. A little bit of a tongue twister, right? But, but here is a, a theological breakdown, right? So Paul here is acknowledging the internal conflict every believer experiences. It's true. Where the presence of sin overshadows the desire to do good. He highlights the, the inadequacy of the law to save. As it exposes sin, but does not empower one to what overcome it. The struggle intensifies when we rely solely on our efforts to resist sinful inclinations. In verse 13, right? So if we were to go to verse 13 in Romans 7, let's pull that up real quick. So Romans 7, look at verse 13. And it says, has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. The law cannot save from sin, right? So verse 13 reminds us that the law is not immoral, but reveals sin within us. Showing the desperate need for divine intervention. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 connects the struggle to our creation in God's image, which includes the freedom to choose, making the battle against sin a part of our fallen yet redeemable nature. Does that make sense? That was kind of a rundown of verses 14 through 17, 13 through 17 as well. All right. So let's look at verses 18 through 23. So starting at verse 18 through 23, right? There, Paul is dwelling deeper into the human condition, right? Expressing the frustration of wanting to do good, but being hindered by what? Sin. He speaks to the power, the, the power, the powerlessness felt when sinful nature dominates. This section underscores the struggle between the mind's intent and the body's actions, emphasizing the law of sin that dwells in our members. Paul's laminate reflects the universal Christian experience, highlighting the constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. So it's a battle between the mind 
right? The mind and our spirit, right? So there's always a battle with our mind and the spirit, right? That's why we say the flesh is weak. We're not talking about the flesh, right? The skin, we're talking about the mind. Our mind is what's weak, right? We're made in the image of God. Our bodies were good. Right? It's our mind that's weak. <laughs> As we scroll on, so in verses 24 through 25, we see there that Paul cries out for what? He's crying out for deliverance, recognizing that rescue comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This acknowledgement shifts the focus from human effort to what? Divine grace, illustrating that victory over sin is possible only through Christ. The cry of a wrecked man that I am, followed by the proclamation of deliverance through Christ, encapsulates the gospel message. Salvation is what a gift. Not earned by works, but granted through faith in Jesus. It's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. Beautiful, yet simple, right? And as we got into Romans chapter 8 here, Paul there is proclaiming the freedom found in Christ Jesus where there is no combination for those in him. This liberation is this liberation is from sin and death, achieved through the law of the spirit of life in Christ. Even in verses three through four, right? It further clarified that God did what the law could not do by sending his son. Jesus' sacrificial death condemns sin in the flesh, fulfilling the law's requirements and us who walk according to his spirit. This passage affirms the transmitted power of Christ's redemption, offering new life and empowering believers to live in righteousness. In the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The saints exemplify the victorious life in Christ, having faced their struggles with sin and emerging triumph through their reliance on God. Their lives illustrate that holiness is attainable when we surrender to the Holy Spirit's guidance. We can draw strength from their examples in our daily lives, understanding that our battles with sin are not fought alone. By embracing the truth that we see in our readings here in Romans 7 and Romans 8, we live in the assurance of God's grace, striving towards holiness with the help of the Holy Spirit, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our next reading will come from Matthew chapter 10, the gospel reading, Matthew chapter 10, verses 9 through 15. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it, says, and it says, provide neither gold, nor silver, nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journeys, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Now, whatever city or town you enter, acquire who in it is worthy, and stay there until you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's talking about the final judgment, the last days. Right? So look at verses 12 through 13, all right? Let's look at this for a second. So in verse 12, it says, And when you go into household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. I'm going to pull up something from Isaiah real quick. So Isaiah 52 Verse seven. All right. So get that pulled up. <laughs> Zoom in. So there in verses 12 through 13, which we just read, Jesus is instructing the disciples on approach on approaching what their mission and providing the importance of what peace. Peace to this house is a greeting that conveys God's blessing and presence. In Isaiah chapter 52, verse seven, it says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Isaiah 52 verse 7 celebrates the beauty of those who bring good news, proclaiming peace and salvation. Similarly, 
Jesus' instructions underscore that disciples' mission is to bring God's peace and salvation to every home. This peace is not merely the absence of conflict, but the presence of God's wholeness and blessing. It's beautiful, right? Let's look at John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So Jesus gives his peace, a peace unlike the world's reassuring believers in the times of trouble. John chapter 20, verse 19. The same day, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, for the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. Jesus greets the disciples with peace, reaffirming his promise. Then we see in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. So peace is the fruit of the Spirit, right? Indicated of, of a life lived in harmony with God's will, right? Even the saints lived out this peace, even amidst persecution and trials. They embodied, God, they embodied God's shalom bringing his presence into their communities through their actions and words. We're all called to be the bearers of peace, extending God's love and reconciliation to others. By aligning ourselves with Christ's teachings and the example of the saints, we contribute to the healing and transformation of the world around us. As we close out and reflect, the study of the saints and scriptures shows a tapestry of faith, struggle, and divine triumph. It's true. The lives of saints offer us tangible examples of holiness, showing us the saint is possible through God's grace. The epistle reading reminds us of our human mortality and the, might, and the mighty redemption found in Christ. While the gospel reading calls us to be active agents of God's peace in the world, it's talking about evangelism, to evangelize, right? Be evangelists of peace, spreading the gospel. As Orthodox Christians, we're all invited to immerse ourselves in these sacred legacies, allowing them to shape our lives in faith communities. By reflecting on the lives of saints and the profound teachings of scripture, we're all equipped to face our struggles with hope, to live out our faith with courage and compassion. May this study inspire us to deeper, may this study inspire us all to deepen our devotion and a more profound commitment to walking in the footsteps of Christ and his saints, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this concludes our study. Oh Lord God, you've spoken us to us your divine secret words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hearers of spiritual words, but doers of good deeds. You're true pursuers of faith, having a blameless life and conduct without reproaching Christ your Lord in your own life. And to you we get glory, Father, Son. Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. Our Father, who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, power, glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the, name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. Thank you all again for following. Hope you've enjoyed this study. Thank you all again. All right, have a blessed day. Later this evening, we'll do some news updates. I have something to show from a friend of mine in Ukraine, and that will be for our news later this evening. So I love you all so much. Have a blessed day. I'm out.